So, okay, let me get started with the question one. It says an 80 turn coil has a diameter of some centimeter. Uh, let me draw this. Okay. Um, so I have a, uh, let me just draw the coil. I have some coil. There's some number of turns and it's got a diameter D. The, uh, and I'll give this a, a symbol N and use that later. The coil is placed in a spatially uniform magnetic field of some magnitude. Let me call this B naught, uh, wrong color. Call this B naught so that the face of the coil and the magnetic field are perpendicular. Yeah. So the direction that magnetic field goes in is this direction. Well, you know, through the coil, but I just didn't want to overwrite. So that's my magnetic field. Um, find the magnitude of the voltage induced in the coil if the magnetic field is reduced to zero uniformly in um, these different time periods. Um, so call this uh, delta T, for example. And so uh, this looks like a straightforward application of Faraday's law, which says that the line integral of E dot DL, um, the, this circle indicated in the closed the loop integral, is given by minus time derivative of the magnetic field, the magnetic flux. So with Faraday's law, the thing that, uh, if you remember, will simplify a lot of your problem solving in many situations is that this line integral of the dot product to electric field and the path element, this is um, the voltage. Because when, when we introduce the voltage or electric potential, voltage was already electric field times the displacement. So that's what this is. So the left-hand side of Faraday's law directly gives you voltage. Uh, the thing that you sometimes have to think about and make sure you don't make mistakes of is the, um, is the direction of a voltage change. But when you, the question is asking you just for the magnitude, then it doesn't matter. So, so really, it, this question comes down to calculating what is my time derivative of the magnetic flux? So it says the magnetic field is being reduced to zero uniformly. That helps because then I can say instead of instantaneous rate of flux, magnetic flux change, I can calculate the, the total change of magnetic flux divided by the total time that we have. And because you are reducing the magnetic field to zero, the total change of magnetic flux will just to be your magnetic flux at the beginning. Um, I mean, there's some sign issue, so, you know, absolute value. <laughs> um, this, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so within the absolute value, um, whatever magnetic flux you have at the beginning, that's going to be your change as you reduce the magnetic field to zero. So, um, and I think I can just write that out a little bit more. The, uh, initial value of magnetic flux, that's going to be our strength of the uniform magnetic field times the area of a loop, which should be pi times d over 2 or radius squared. Now, this is where you have to be careful. We have an n turn coil, and each turn of the coil will count. Uh, for its own um, flux separately. Uh, you can, there's some topological thing you can imagine, but I think most people get it if uh, you, when, if I just say you multiply it by the number of turns. That's kind of the natural thing to do, and natural thing to do will give you the right answer, times that. So that's our value of magnetic flux. Um, so, so the, um, the rate of change, of magnetic flux for let's say one of these, maybe one involving delta t equals one second. That's uh, simply going to be um, b naught times pi r squared <laughs> times n over um, delta t. 
So let me plug in these numbers in all from alpha so that I don't have to do any unit conversion. I can just let it do its thing. <laughs> um, so my initial magnetic field was 0 0.85 Tesla times pi times oh, the diameter, 20 centimeter divide. Uh, let me do the parenthesis. 20 centimeter divided by 2 squared. That's the area. Times n, 80 turn. Divided by 1 second. I think that's the right number of seconds. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see what it does. It should give me one of the answer options should be in voltage. Uh. Yeah. One of the answer options is <laughs> two point one four volts. So let me do B. Um. A and C are basically the same with the different numbers. So two point one four volts should be right for B. Yeah. That's it. Um. I don't know why it took people so long. Um, it, it, maybe they were shocked by how simple it was. I mean, it, it is a simple question if you understand that left-hand side of Faraday's law gives you that voltage directly. That's kind of... Uh, or I, I guess even the, the way the, it's specified in the textbook, it actually tells you the voltage. I think this integral form is one that I happen to prefer because... I'm looking ahead to other uh, situations where you might want the electric field instead of voltage. But in our applications, most of the time, we'll just want the voltage. So this is good.